to see you this morning. We uh, have a little issue with the air conditioner out there this morning, and so uh, we're doing it the old-fashioned way today. We got the fans on and the doors open. So, uh, amen. The old saying goes, there's more than one way to skin a cat, right? I, I couldn't say that in early service because Sally was here. She, she, she's real fond of those cats. So, uh, well, good to see you this morning. Appreciate you being here. Happy New Year to you. I hope everybody had a, a Merry Christmas, a blessed Christmas, and a Happy New Year. And uh, looking forward to what God's going to do in your life today. He wants to do something. Amen? Amen. Every one of us. He's wanting to do something in our lives. And so uh, it's our prayer that uh, God will open up our hearts, that we might hear from Him, and uh, we might be surrendered to what He wants to do. We get ready to uh, open up in prayer. Uh, remember all those that are dealing with COVID. It's good to see some folks coming back. Good, Candy and Morgan and right. Mason, and Louise. I know you're glad to have everybody back. Amen. So, uh, but it's good to see all of you and appreciate you being here this morning. We got several that are dealing with COVID. Remember Tish Johnson and her family, and uh, Johnny and Vicky Bazin and their family. I got a text from her after Sunday school, right before Sunday school this morning, that another one of their family members has tested positive for it. So just keep everybody in prayer. And uh, Steve, Yes, ma'am. We remember Alan Boykin. That's Dr. Boykin's uh, brother. They've just taken him to the hospital. Okay. With it. And he's compromised. Yeah. Remember, uh, Penny's dentist had it, and I guess he's about on the tail end of it. And then his brother has a lot of physical issues, and uh, he's... he's Tested Down syndrome, and he's tested positive now. They're on the way to the hospital with him. So, if you will, remember Alan Boykin in prayer. And uh, got a lot of folks that are recovering from surgeries and facing surgery. Remember uh, Frank uh, Crotz, if you will. He's having a lot of problems and issues with his back and legs. And looks like uh, they're running tests on him right now, but they haven't given him any direction on where it's going from there. Remember Lavetta's family. She's got uh, sisters and brothers that are sick and need our prayers and so remember then yes sir uh don's uh at home and they've got hospice uh, coming in caring for her uh she, her, her testimony is strong her faith strong but her body's just really weak and so uh, just keep Dawn and ray and them in your prayers as well i know we all have those that we care about or are concerned about and we need to cast those cares upon the lord today and we need to pray that god will prepare our hearts what he has for us. We need to hear him. Amen. Amen. We're not careful. We can get all wrapped up in everything that's going on with sickness and everything that's going on in this world and all that. And, and it'll, it'll deafen us uh, to the voice of the Lord. Uh, we'll get all, all concerned about that and we won't, we won't be concerned about what he is saying to us. And so we need to make sure that we pray this morning and prepare our hearts uh, that we might hear him and receive from him. So altars open if you'd like to come and pray this morning. Uh, let's call upon the name of the Lord. family to worship you and to pray together and to fellowship together it's just it's good to be together father in times like this and god thank you for each one that's here today we thank you for uh, lord touching and, and healing and strengthening and, and thank you for uh, bringing folks back to church that have been sick god we give you the praise and the glory for that father we thank you this morning for our savior jesus christ and i pray father that everything that is said and done would exalt jesus would lift him up would honor him today Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit would lead you out and direct the service. And Father, I pray that the Holy Ghost would move upon everyone's heart here today. We need you. We need you to touch our hearts. We need you to open up our hearts. We need you to help us to hear and, and to understand. And, and then by the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, apply it to our lives. And so, Father, we just trust in you to do that work this morning. We thank you, Father, for being with us in the early service and for the uh, soul that was saved. God, we thank you and we praise you for that. Uh, and Lord, we pray for souls to be saved in this service. We pray, Lord, that you would open the eyes of those that are blinded by the God of this world, those that are in bondage to sin. Uh, Lord, soften their heart even now and let them be saved today. We pray that you'd strengthen the church and encourage those that are discouraged. 
Father, be with all those that are suffering. Be with those that are grieving at this time. Just pour your grace out upon them. Let the Holy Spirit bring comfort and peace to their heart. God, we'll thank you and praise you for it all. Lord, we, we are so thankful that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, Father, I've been asked this morning about if we're expecting a, a good uh, year ahead. And, and Father, I don't know what the year holds, but I know you'll be good. And so, God, we just want to praise you and thank you for that. Uh, Lord, we love you this morning. Have your way in this service. Be glorified. And we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon. Thank you for the beautiful flower during the loss of my mother. Uh, we appreciate all the prayers, cards, calls, and texts, Frankie, Lord, and family. So continue to remember Frankie and his family in prayer and pray for the Prestles as they're trying to make it in a camper. Woo! Hallelujah. I, I, I don't know that I want to live in a camper with just me and Denny. <laughs> Much less a baby and a newborn. Amen. I could She went out. I could, yeah. Yeah. I could, by the grace of, oh, she's back here in the sound, but she hears me. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, man. Let me, uh, let me make a few announcements and get out of this hole I just dug. Uh, we've got next, uh, next Sunday, folks, December the 9th, uh, January the 9th. Boy, it's going to be hard to get used to everything, 2022 and all that, but uh, next Sunday at 1045, this time next Sunday, uh, our children will be sharing their play parts and their scriptures and things like that uh, that they didn't get to do during the Christmas time uh, because uh, the church was
was shut down. And so that's next Sunday morning at 1045. And then in the bulletin it says that we will have our uh, uh, Christmas play at 6 o'clock. Uh, we are going to have a Christmas play next Sunday evening, but it's going to be two showings of it. It's going to be at 5 and at 7. So uh, you go ahead and pick you out what time you want to be here, either 5 o'clock or 7 o'clock. But uh, the Christmas play usually draws a pretty good attendance, and so we want to make room, make sure we got room for everybody and that everybody's comfortable, uh, not getting too overcrowded. And so just uh, just make, go ahead and make plans whether you're going to be here at 5 o'clock or 7 o'clock, but they will be uh, doing this show tw the show, the play twice. Uh, the baby bottles that we uh, sent out a while back for uh, Your Choices Randolph, uh, they need to be back in next Sunday, so if you still have those, fill them up with silver change and uh, get those back in next Sunday. Uh, for all those that are involved in, uh, as ministry leaders and teachers, uh, we're having a uh, planning meeting uh, Monday, January the 10th, which will be a week from tomorrow. And uh, that'll be at 6.30, so make plans on being here. Uh, Dee will be having calendars for everybody, and so they'll be, she'll be giving those out. But make sure that you're here for that. We just want to make sure that we plan ahead uh, so we don't have four events on one Saturday or whatever. We just don't get doubled up and that kind of thing. So make sure you're here for that. Uh, Discover Hope class every Sunday. Uh, see Glenn Brooks about that. And we got a new Sunday school class starting next Sunday morning, and that is the uh, Discover Christianity class. And if you're a new Christian, a young Christian, or if you'd just like to have some basics of Christianity, maybe uh, uh, you're saved and you've been just kind of floundering around, not knowing really what uh, you need to do and that kind of thing, uh, next Sunday morning, 9.45, Dwayne Freeman is going to be teaching Discover Christianity and that'll be back in the uh, back classroom back there and so uh, you come on and, and be a part of that and it's, it'll be like a, a eight week class and then you can move out into a, another Sunday school class after that. Anything else need to be announced this morning? All right, if not, let's worship the Lord with our giving. <laughs> James Robertson, would you pray for the book, uh, off the book? Lord, oh, thank you for this day. Lord, uh, thank you for the chance to come back in your house and listen to your word. Lord, open up our hearts uh, that we can uh, obtain what uh, Brother Steve is bringing to us today. Lord, uh, for me. Lord, thank you for the chance to give back what you have given to us. May we use it wisely and uh, uh, update your kingdom. And Lord, uh, thank you for loving us. Yes. And, uh, Amen. Thank you, brother.
appreciate that. He is all we need. Hey, thank you. He is all we need. Amen. Amen. You think you need something besides Jesus? He's the one that can provide it all. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You're right. He's all I need. Amen. Thank God he's the answer to all our needs. Thank you, Lord. Physical, financial, spiritual. Amen. Thank God. And he's there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yes, he is. Amen. I just want to thank you for watching over protecting my wife and I. Thank God we hadn't got the COVID. Amen. It'd probably take me out of here. I'd be in a better place, but thank God. <laughs> I wouldn't be suffering. Pray for those that have had it. Especially for Dee, I played for her much. Thank God she's here this morning. Amen. Mm -hmm. I just thank God for Jesus. Thank God he came into this old sea of her world to save an old low down rotten sinner like me. Thank God he saves old sinners. Amen. Like yes, sir. Here. Yes, sir. And thank God he's on the throne this morning. Amen. Thank God they can't take him off. <laughs> The devil tried, but he lost. Amen. Yeah, he tried. But thank God there's nothing can take him off the throne. And thank God I serve a living Savior today. Yes, sir. That he's alive and well. And I just want to praise him this morning. I hadn't praised him in a while. But thank God for letting us come through this trials. There's so much suffering going on. Oh. God's trying to wake some people up. I yes, sir, all of us. Amen. I believe he's trying to make us realize that he is God. And he's on the throne. Amen. And there's no other answer but Jesus. That's right. Amen. Amen. Praise God for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God I serve the living Savior. Yes, sir. Praise God I don't serve the devil anymore. Not through Budweiser or any other thing in this world. Thank God, thank God, thank God that He saves old sinners. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 That's why He came, to seek and to save that which was lost and to save sinners. Amen. 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 I hope you know Him today as your Savior. If not, you'll have an opportunity before this, uh, this service is over Amen. to surrender your life to Christ. Uh, this is a time of year when in ministry, uh, as a pastor, and you probably have experienced it too, if you support uh, ministries outside of Hope Baptist Church, if you support certain parachurch ministries and things like that, uh, this is a time of year when you start getting a lot of emails from different ministries asking you for uh, a year-end donation. They're trying to get the last of their donations in, and they usually send out emails sharing what uh, has, happened, has happened over the past year and what they've been able to accomplish by the grace of God and things like that. And I've been getting a bunch of them, but one of them just caught my eye because of the subject line. It was from Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, and the subject line said this. It said, a special video message for you as we look forward to what God will do in 2022. And... Uh, this time of year is a time when we start doing those kind of things. We start looking ahead. You know, we, we've come to the end of one year and we're just at the very beginning of another year and we start looking ahead and we start making plans and things like that. And, and I'm not preaching against that because that's just a, a normal thing. We, I do it. Uh, you know, we make resolutions and things like that. And I told them in the early service that I make personal, private Resolutions. That way, if I don't see them through, nobody knows about it. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but I do. I, I make certain, you know, uh, personal resolutions for the year and, and hope by the grace of God to be able to see them through Amen. throughout the year. But as a church, as a pastor, we make plans. We're, I've already looked into uh, September and, and camp meeting 2022 and started making plans for that. And and uh, making plans for what we'll do here at the 4th of July and, and just different things. And so there's nothing wrong with making resolutions or having plans or setting goals or any of that. Uh, but what we have to realize is that there, when we're standing here looking out into a new year, we can be certain of one thing. 
And that is there's going to be a whole lot of uncertainty with this coming year. Amen. 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 And uh, the Bible speaks a little bit to that. If you'll open your Bibles to uh, the book of James, James chapter 4, <laughs> James chapter 4. You dare say amen. amen. James chapter 4. And I also told him in the, in the early service that this would be a great time for you to start making it a habit to bring your Bibles to church. Amen? Amen. amen. Now, you ought to bring your Bibles. And, and I've given this illustration before, and I'll give it again because it's a good one. It helps us to understand. You can play baseball without a glove. Right? I mean, I wouldn't recommend it, but you can't play baseball without a glove. And you can come to church without your Bible. But if you try to play baseball without a glove, you're not going to catch as many. And if you try to come to church without your Bible, you're not going to catch as much. Amen. Amen. Amen? So bring your Bibles and get used to turning the pages and getting to the passages of Scriptures and things like that. Amen. 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 Right? Bring your Bibles. James chapter 4. If you're there, I'd like to ask all who can and will to stand as we honor the reading of God's Word. James chapter 4, we're going to start with verse 13, and it starts out with a little phrase that we're probably not familiar with, go to now. Go to now. And, and what James is saying is, listen up now. Pay attention now. Ye that say, today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain, whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanishes away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time again to be in your house. I, I, Lord, I'm, I'm just excited about uh, what you're doing. I'm excited about the soul that was saved in the early service. And Lord, I, just, uh, I anticipate you moving on hearts here. And so God, you have your way. Uh, Lord, you bring conviction. Uh, Lord, you, uh, you help us uh, this morning. Uh, Lord, if there's one blinded by the God of this world, we pray that you'll open up their eyes and that today will be the day that they surrender their life to Christ. Pray that the church will be strengthened to help us to see uh, that in the days ahead, what we need to do is, is be obedient to the Lord and, and be a bright light that shines for Him. But God, you just have your way. Bind the devil in Jesus' name. Keep him at bay. And just let the Holy Spirit move unhindered here this morning. And we'll be quick to praise you for it all. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So, there's a, there's a lot of things that will be, that will, there'll be a lot of uncertainty in the coming year. I, I stood here in this pul pulpit January the 5th, 2020. And, man, we were excited about 2020. And the reason we were excited is because it was our 20th year of ministry. And, man, I don't know how many of you were here, but we had a big projection back there. And it said 2020. And it talked about vision and, and everything. And, boy, I got up here and I preached about all the things that were going to happen in 2020 and all the things that we were going to be able to do. And, and uh, little did I know that it was the sovereign will of God for a pandemic to sweep this world. Amen. I didn't have any clue that just a few weeks from then, I would be trying to make the decision, are we going to have the church open or not? Are we going to sit six feet apart or not? How many rows should I have in the church to keep people far enough away? Oh, should I tell people to wear a mask or not to wear a mask? All those kind of decisions, and I had absolutely no clue of that when I stood in the pulpit on January the 5th, that Sunday morning. You see, there's a lot of uncertainty in the year ahead. Larry asked me back there a while ago, right before the service, he said, so what's, the, what's your thoughts about the new year? I said, you'll find out here in just a little bit. <laughs> One thing that is certain, there's going to be a lot of uncertainty in 2022. Yeah. Amen? And, and you see what James says here. He says uh, uh, what we need to be concerned about, two things that we need to be concerned about. One is the will of God. Amen? Amen? What is the will of God? Like I said, I had no clue that it was God's sovereign will to sweep this world with a pandemic. And some people say, you think God's responsible for that? All I know is that God could have stopped it and He didn't. That's right. Amen. And He's sovereign. He's in control of everything. And so I say in His sovereign will, He allowed the pandemic to come. Amen. 
Amen. He's got a purpose in it. Daryl in his testimony a while ago said that God's trying to wake us up. I believe he is trying to wake us up. I don't know so much that he's trying to wake the world up. They need to be saved. They're blind. They need to be, they need to be born again. But I think he's trying to wake the church up. Amen. 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 But there's a lot of uncertainty. And we have, what we have to be concerned about, according to James here, is uh, what we should say is if the Lord will. That's what we're going to be concerned about, God's will. And even that is uncertain. There's a few things that we know are certain when it comes to the will of God. It says in 1 Thessalonians, and everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. We, we ought to be thankful. Amen. We ought to be thankful for this past year, and we ought to be thankful for what God does in the coming year. Amen. And in all things, we should be thankful. So we know that's the case, that there's, there's certain things. But as far as what is God's will for next week and next month and six months from now, you and I don't know. Amen. 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 We don't know. And so he says we ought to be concerned about His will, but he also says we ought to be concerned about our own demise. Amen. Our own death. For what is your life? It is but a vapor. That appears a little while and vanishes away. Amen. Now, I, I don't mean to gross you out or freak you out this morning. I'm not trying to be morbid, but I'm going to tell you something right now. We're one day into this new year. And it's possible that if the Lord tarries and, and, and we see this year through, it's very possible that some of us won't be around here. Amen. Amen. I can tell you right now, we have buried some folks from Hope Baptist Church over the last couple of years that we were not thinking about burying. It wasn't like they were sick for months and months and months. Amen. They went out of here in a hurry. And so we have to be concerned as we go into the new year with all its uncertainty, we have to be concerned about God's will and we have to be reminded of just how frail our life is. Amen. We can be here one minute and go on the next. The Bible says there is but a step between us and death. Amen? Amen? So, what I want to share with you this morning is a message entitled, What is Certainly Before Us in 2022? What is Certainly Before Us in 2022? Go over in the Old Testament to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 11. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we had to open the doors up because people, it was so crowded in here they had to stand outside to hear. Wouldn't that be good? We could even baptize them right out there. There's a muddy, muddy old hole out there right now. Deuteronomy chapter 11. You there? Say amen. So what is certainly before us in 2022? Look at verse 26. God says, Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. You know what is certainly ahead of us in 2022? A blessing and a curse. Amen. Amen. And it's all dependent on the next two verses. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way, and I command as I out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. Folks, I'm going to tell you something right now. There's a lot of uncertainty in the days ahead, but one thing that we can, two things that we can be certain of is that God has set before us a blessing and a curse. And He does not say, I have set blessings before you. I have set curses before you. He says, I have set a certain blessing and a certain curse before you. And it's amazing to think about this, but this same blessing and this same curse has been set before every man and every woman that has ever lived. Amen. You go all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve had this blessing and this curse set before them. They did. Amen. They had to, and it, it, it was all dependent on whether or not they obeyed the, the commandments of the Lord. Or whether they disobey the commandments of the Lord. And we know what happened, don't we? Amen. And we know the results of that. We know what has happened. Death entered into the world. Let me just show you what this, this blessing and this curse is. Aren't you glad God's a God of revelation? 
Amen. Aren't you glad he doesn't keep us in the dark? Amen. He says, I've said a blessing before you and a curse before you, and I want you to know what it is. So go over to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. You there? Look at verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15. See, I have set before thee this day life and good, and death and evil. You want to know what the blessing is that God has set before us? It's life and good. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now look, don't, don't, don't misunderstand that. That doesn't mean that everything in your life is going to be good. Amen. 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 Boy, if that were the case, all of our faith has been shipwrecked by now. Amen. Not everything in life is good, but you know what? No matter what we go through in this life, God is good. And He is working good for all those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. So God is saying that, hey, listen, I have set a blessing before you. And it's determined on whether or not you obey or disobey my word. And I've set a blessing before you and it's life and good. But if you disobey, I've set a curse before you and it is death and evil. Now before you, before I can give you, before you can appreciate good news, you have to realize how bad it is. Amen. 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 So I want, even though God puts the blessing before the curse, I want to do, I want us to look at the curse this morning. And Lord willing, and we live, we'll look at the blessing tonight. Y'all like how it kind of tied in there? Amen. Some of you didn't even get it. Some of you don't forgot what we read over there. Okay. <laughs> But I want us to look at the curse because we have to understand how bad the curse is, how bad this death and evil is, before we can appreciate the blessing of life and good. Amen. Amen? Amen. So, the, the Hebrew words here, death and evil, I, I want to give you what, uh, what, it, what all it involves in the Hebrew. We think about death, we think about somebody dying, and we bury them, and, and we go on without them. That's, what we, that's about our knowledge of death. We think of evil as, as you know, somebody out there that does uh, terrible things. But boy, when you take everything that is involved with death and evil in the Hebrew, I want to just kind of give you a very uh, partial list of what all is involved in those. Pestilence. Ruin. Crime. Destruction. Suddenly. Now I want you to hold on to that word. I'm, I'm about in the middle ways in the list, but I want you to hold on to that word suddenly. Calamity. Adversity. Affliction. Grief. Harm. Vexed. Hurt. Punishment. Brokenness. Illness. That is what is involved in this curse that is set before every man and woman. That's what's involved in when we disobey the commandments of God. When we rebel against the Lord. Now, as we look at this and we think about it and we, we think about death and evil, we think about those who disobey the Word of God and the commandments of God, a lot of us, and folks, let me tell you something. As a, as a young Christian, I thought this myself. But we may look at this and say, you know what? All of this pain and suffering and, and brokenness and, and calamity, I don't see that in those who are disobedient to the commandments of God. I don't see that in those who are rebelling against God. I see that more in those who are striving and trying to live according to the Word of God. Amen? Amen? I mean, when you take somebody who is totally sold out to the Lord and they are trying to live according to the Word of God and you look at their life, that it's not a life of plenty. It's not an easy life. It's not a, a cushy life. It's a hard life. It's a, we're, we're swimming upstream as Christians, especially when we try to sell out to God. 
And so as we look at the scriptures, we might begin to think, I don't know if that's accurate. I don't know if that's right. And if we get to thinking that way, it's not long before that old deceiver, the devil, will slip in there and begin to convince us that maybe this isn't infallible. Maybe this isn't inerrant. Maybe, maybe there are some flaws in this. Amen. Folks, I can assure you this morning that the Word of God is true. I can assure you that it is infallible and it is without error. Amen. It is a solid rock that we can build our life upon. And if we look at something and say, hey, that just don't add up. That don't make sense. I don't see the disobedient. I don't see the, 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 the rebellious going through all of the things you just listed. I see them living large. I see them with plenty of money and plenty of possessions. I don't think that that's accurate. Then you know what that means? That means that we don't have a good understanding of the Word of God. We need to get in there and dig around and study and put it together line upon line, precept upon precept, so that we can come to an understanding of what God says. God makes no mistakes. Amen. And if He said that the curse was for those that disobey, then the curse is for those that disobey. Amen. So let's try to get a little help with this curse thing and, and looking at how many of you, don't you know somebody either personally or through the means of media that live an ungodly life, that, that do not give God a, I said a second thought earlier in the service, uh, early, in the early service, but they don't even give God a first thought. They do what they want to do. They, they spend their money how they want to spend it. They go where they want to go. Man, they, they, praise God, they vacation on yachts and they have plastic surgery so they're always looking young and they're, they work out and they're feeling strong. And you look at them and say, well, they don't go through all this calamity and pestilence and everything. And we know that's, we look out there and we see it and we say, that's, that's true. They seem to be living the good life. But I want you to go somewhere with me in the scriptures. I want you to go to Psalm 73. Psalm 73. Amen. The psalmist had that same kind of battle going on in his mind. How to, how to get the word of God to line up. Amen. Psalm 73, if you're there, say amen. Amen. Look at verse 1. Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. That has got to be our starting point. Truly God is good. Amen. 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 Now, brothers and sisters, we, we know that in our church we've had a lot of sickness. We've had, we've had people pass. We, we, I mean, and, and it's not just, man, we've got a small congregation. There's... That man, right now we've got families and all of them are sick with COVID. And, and if you've gone through COVID, you know, uh, it might cause you to lose your taste and smell and that'll be it. And then, man, it might put you in the hospital on a respirator. And, and so we, we know all of this stuff that is going on. But you know what? Just because we're feeling bad don't mean God's feeling bad. Right. Just because we're feeling bad doesn't mean that God has turned back. He's still good. Amen. And that has to be our starting point in everything. God's good. Amen. Oh, He's holy. He's righteous. He's a God of judgment. God's good. Amen. He is so good that He gave His only begotten Son for you and me. Amen. That's how good He is. He's so good that He never leaves us nor forsakes us. Hallelujah. He's wonderful. He's good. <laughs> and the psalmist says, but as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. We look at the wicked out there and they've got their millions and their billions and their possessions and, and that's what he was saying. I look out there and it seems like they have more than, than, than they well need, way more than what they need. And he says, I, I just don't get it. I'm envious of the foolish. Verse 4, for there are no bands in their death. They don't suffer, their, but their strength is firm. They're strong. They're healthy. They are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. If they get in trouble, they buy their way out. Amen? Therefore, they, pride compasseth them about as a chain. In other words, they have the mindset that nobody can hurt me, and they're all prideful and boastful. And it goes on to say, they have more than heart could wish. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. 
They're corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth. Look what he says in verse, 13, uh, verse 11. He says, and they say, how doth God know? And is there knowledge in the most high? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. There's so many today that, that are living in this world. And like I said, they're living large. And they think God is a Disney character. They think God is a fairy tale. They think God is some old man and he's a figment of some preacher's imagination. Amen. That's the way they live their life. And there's no, uh, there's no punishment. There's no hardship. They just keep on doing what they're doing. Verse 13. The psalmist says, Verily I've cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency. If we're not careful, we'll get to thinking that, hey, maybe this Christianity stuff isn't all that's cracked up to be. Maybe I ought to go back out into the world. Maybe I ought to start chasing after that dollar. He says, For all day long I've been plagued and chastened every morning. I'm the one suffering, not them. I've tried to obey you. I've tried to keep your commandments. And I'm the one suffering. It was about to... About to get the best of it. About to get the best of the psalmist. And if we're not careful, it'll about to get the best of us. Yeah. When we're going through trials and hardships and sickness and we got more month than we got money, we'll start thinking like this. But look at what he says in verse 16. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of God and I understood their end. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou cast them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation? In a moment. That quick. That quick. I told you over there in that list there was a word suddenly to hold on to it. Because that's how quickly things can change for those who disobey the commandments of the Lord. Oh, they might think they're getting by with it. But in a moment, he says here, in a moment they are utterly consumed with terrors. In a moment, they find themselves in the middle of that list I gave you a while ago. The pestilence, the ruin, the destruction, the vexing. They find themselves in the middle of it. And here's how we, here's how we kind of bring all this together and make it, make it make sense. We have to realize that God is an eternal God. His world is an eternal world. I can tell you right now, God does not have a new 2022 calendar on His wall. He operates in eternity. Amen. God is eternal. Amen. His Word is eternal. His kingdom is eternal. And this cursing, this curse, is, a, is an eternal curse. And this blessing is an eternal blessing. And we have to... We have to keep our mind in that way of thinking so that we can make it make sense. There's a lot of men and women today, the, the wealthy and the wretched, those with all kind of possessions and those who are paupers, and they're living in disobedience to the Word of God. They're rebelling against the commandments of the Lord, and they mock God, and they treat Him as a dumb idol. And they think they're right in their understanding. And they live rebellious and they live wickedly. And they not only do those things, those evil things, those sinful things, but they take pleasure in others that do them. That's straight out of Romans chapter 1. You need to read that. But in the sanctuary of God, we understand their end. If you're walking with Christ today, you understand the end of the wicked. You understand the fulfillment of this curse. The psalmist says that, that God has set them in slippery places. In other words, they're losing traction every day. They might think they're going forward. They might think they're gaining the things of this world. But they are losing traction every day. They are getting closer and closer every day to the flames of hell. Amen. He says, how are they brought into destruction in a moment? In a moment they are consumed. Now listen, I've been talking about they. But let's talk about us. Let's talk about you. You see, you may think you're getting by with it. You're living life the way you want to live it. You're doing what you want to do. You're going where you want to go. Oh, you find your way into church a few Sundays a month for an hour or two. 
And then you go out and you do whatever you want to do. And you don't think God knows about it? That's the same thing the psalmist wrote about the wicked. Does God have knowledge? Does God even know? Sure He does. Amen. He knows exactly what's going on in your life. Amen. And even though you've, you, you, you're living large and you're getting money and you're doing whatever you want to do and you're going to the places that you want to go, I can tell you right now, you're not getting by with it. Amen. You're in a slippery place. And coming into church once in a while, it's not, a, it's not going to change the course of that. You're in a slippery place and you're, you're losing ground and you're going to find yourself in the middle of that list. That list of pain and that list of suffering. Where you're going to find yourself is you're going to be like the rich man and the beggar Lazarus. You're going to die and you're going to lift up your eyes being in torment and it's going to happen like that. Because your life is nothing but a vapor that appears a little while and vanishes away. How many of you have ever been to a bonfire? You ever been to a bonfire? You ever been to a campfire? Has any of you ever seen fire? <laughs> Hot as fire in here right now. <laughs> have you ever seen fire and noticed that when it's burning, you might have an old pine log in there or something, and it'll pop, and all them, them sparks go up in the air? You ever notice that? How far do they go? They don't go very far. As soon as they get away from that fire, they get up there and they just kind of die out and they disappear. The Bible says that's the way our life is. We're like, the, we're like the sparks that ascend up. And you see, you think you're getting by with it. You think you're pulling one over on God. You're pulling the wool over on His eyes, man. I'm going to tell you right now, you're not getting by with it at all. Amen. Say, preacher, how do you know? Because of the Word of God. Amen. Go over to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Amen. And we're going, to, we're going to start at a verse of Scripture that most people know. Verse 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world. Let me tell you something. God's not about condemning you. God's about saving you. Amen. God does not have any pleasure in the death of the wicked. He does not want anybody to die and go to hell. He sent His Son. And His Son came into the world not to condemn you, but that through Him you might be saved. And He's the only way to be saved, but praise God, there is a way to be saved. Amen. And then He says there in verse uh, 18, He that believeth on Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Condemned already. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Friend, let me tell you something. You're not getting by with it. You're playing your games with God. You're going out here and living large in this world and getting all this world has to offer you. And then you slip into church every now and then and you think that you've got God fooled. You're not getting by with it. The Word of God says that if you have not believed in the name of the Son of God, you're condemned already. If you were to die, it's already been passed. You, you don't go to the pearly gates and get judged. You've already been judged. You're condemned. Amen. You're going to die and go to hell. Amen. You know, man, I, I am so concerned, so concerned about young people today. And hey, look, I'm not just talking about teenagers. Talking about the 20s and the 30 somethings. All they think about is their career. All they think about is five years from now, what kind of house I'm going to have. Our young people, man, all they want is the next cell phone, all they want is a fast car. And they slip into church every now and then on Sunday morning and it eases their conscience a little bit. At least they can tell people that they go to church. You're not getting by with it, friend. You don't have God fooled. God's not going to save you because your mom and daddy saved. God's not going to spare you from hell just because you're a good person and you don't do drugs like the others do. There's a curse 
set before you if you disobey the commandments of the Lord. And the greatest commandment to disobey is the fact that He sent His Son and He tells you you must believe in Him and you reject that. Amen. When God's Word says that the only way to be saved is the, through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And you think you can get by without being born again, without turning your life over to Jesus? Man, you're condemned already. That curse is being fulfilled in your life right this second. And if you were to drop dead, you would lift up your eyes in the torments of hate. So I didn't come here for this this morning. Yes, you did. Amen. You're only here because God gave you the strength to be here. You're only here right now living and breathing and hearing my words because God's allowed your heart to be and because He's allowed your lungs to breathe. He's got you here to save you. Every one of us, I don't care how young or how old, has a blessing and a curse set before us. Amen. And it all hinges on whether or not we obey the Word of God. An eternal curse, an eternal blessing. The eternal curse is a lake that burns with fire and brimstone. You can think right now of the greatest pain and agony you have ever had to endure, and buddy, that's a cakewalk compared to the torments of hell. Amen. Right. I sit in here this morning trying to think about how bad hell would be. Trying to compare it to something in this world. There's no comparison. Amen. It is a place of weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. The Bible describes it as outer darkness. Where you'd give your own soul for one drop of water and you'll never get it. It's a place where the Bible says that the worm dieth not. In other words, your agony never ceases. It never even eases up. I referred to the rich man and Lazarus a while ago, the beggar Lazarus. Some say that's a parable. I believe it's an actual account. Amen. And I believe that rich man that fared sumptuously every day, man, he had the good food, he had the good clothes, he, man, he was, he was, man, he was doing it. And the Bible says he died and in hell he lifted up his eyes. That somewhere was back around 2,000 years ago or so. And I can tell you right now, he's still burning in the flames of hell. And he has not had one millisecond where the pain and the agony eased up. And he will stay there throughout eternity because it is an eternal curse. Amen. Jesus said you must be born again. You must be born again. <laughs> Friend, if you want that eternal blessing, you cannot find it in this world. It can only be found in Christ. Amen. If you want to get out from under that curse, if you want to get out from under that condemnation, there's only one way. Jesus Christ is the door. And if you will come to Him, He will give you eternal life. Amen. I praise God we had an older gentleman this morning surrender his life to Christ. Jesus will save you. I, I don't care who you are. I don't care what you are. I don't care how long you've been that way. If you'll surrender your life to Him, He'll save you and give you eternal life. Amen. 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 You know what's ahead of us this coming year? Uncertainty. No doubt. Amen. But what's ahead of us today and tomorrow, and next week, and next month is a blessing and a curse. You stand with me. Kids bowed and eyes closed. The door is going to play. She's going to play for an invitation. Here's the invitation this morning. Are you ready to turn your life over to Christ? 
Are you ready to quit playing games? Do you, or, you understand this morning you're not getting by with anything? There is knowledge with God. He knows every hair on your head. He knows every sin you're involved in. And yet he says, come unto me. And I will not turn you away. I will in no wise cast you out. If you need to be saved, I invite you to come this morning. I invite you to come. I believe with all my heart there's somebody here today and you're under that curse. You know you stand condemned right now. The Bible says you're dead in trespasses and sin. But you don't have to leave that way, friend. God will save you if you come to me. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're dealing with it right now, if God is dealing with you and you have that uneasiness in your heart and you know that you're not right with God, would you just at least slip your hand up? Would you do that? Preacher, I don't know that I'm saved. I, I don't think that I am. And today I'd like to be saved. Today I'd like to turn my life over to Jesus. Would you just slip your hand up right where you stand? I won't embarrass you. I won't ask you to come forward. You can pray silently right where you're at. Friend, if you need to be saved right now, would you slip your hand up? Quit playing games with God. You're going to lose. In a moment, in a moment, suddenly, you'll find yourself in eternity. One last time, if you need to be saved, would you slip your hand up? I, I can't see your heart. God bless you. Thank you. I see your hand. I can't see your heart. That's why I'm asking you to raise your hand. If God's dealing with you, at least let me pray for you. Would you slip your hand up? Preacher, I need to be saved. I need to be saved. With every head bowed, every eye closed, the one that raised their hand. You don't have to look up here at me. But if you'd like to ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins, if you'd like to surrender your life to Christ today, would you just nod your head, yay or nay? Okay. Praise the Lord. Well, right where you stand, you can just pray it from your heart. Just say, dear Jesus, I know I've sinned against you. And I'm sorry. I've disobeyed your commandments. And I ask you today to forgive me. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again on the third day. And I trust you today to be my Savior and my Lord. I surrender my life to you. In Jesus' name, every head bowed, every eye closed. Friend, without looking up, if you prayed that prayer this morning, you believe Jesus Christ saved you, would you just nod your head? Yes or no? You believe God saved you? Amen. Father, I pray for this young man. I pray God for his salvation. I pray God that you make yourself real to him. I pray that he feels your presence in his life. And Lord, there'll be changes taking place in his life that the only way he can explain it is that you're at work in his life. Thank you for his decision this morning. Thank you for giving him the, the grace and the strength to raise his hand. Thank you for dealing with his heart where he knew he was lost. And God, I just thank you that you've saved him today. Now, Lord, I pray that you'd go with each one of us this morning. Help us to realize that there is a blessing and a curse set before each one of us. And it all depends on what we do with your word. All depends on what we do with Jesus. So, God, you help us. Continue to deal with hearts. If there's one here today that is lost right now, God, I pray that they would find no peace until they call upon the name of Jesus. But God, thank you for being with us here. Thank you for all that you do for us. We love you. Thank you for loving us. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 God bless you, folks. Come back tonight and you hear about the blessing.